They are dangerous, gigantic, real monsters. Seven machines from the paper industry and they're all needed when it comes to creating these little rolls. The smallest machine starts things rolling. The harvester, a timber harvesting machine weighing 18 tons. In the forest, this powerful machine is a real all-rounder. Felling trees, delimbing and sawing up trunks. All this takes less than a minute to do. Its secret, this machine head. It has a saw at the bottom and four curved knives on the side. The knives delimb the felled trunk and these rollers push it forwards. The harvester cuts down as many as a hundred trees per hour. But it's choosy. It only wants the bad wood, trunks which are crooked or rotten. The good straight wood would be wasted on toilet paper. That's used to make furniture. Thousands of tree trunks end up on the site of this factory here. Here the wood is to be turned into pulp, the raw material for paper, for toilet paper too. To do this, the wood first has to be reduced to small chips, and that requires a gigantic facility. The giant wood chipper. It fills this entire hall. 30 meter high conveyor belts go from the chipper right up to these two huge mountains of wood chips. But back to the beginning, the first station. Each log travels down this shaft. Behind it, rotating drums are waiting. They debark the tree trunks and they do it without any knives, saws or axes. The bark comes off just by the logs knocking each other in the drum. And now, on to cleaning. The water bath washes stones and sand out of the logs. After all, you don't want them in your toilet paper. And then they go through this red metal detector. It goes off a good 20 times a day. We find lots of different metal parts in the wood, ranging from nails and screws to larger parts, such as construction cramps, crowbars and even bullet fragments. Shrapnel from military exercises, for example. A tree trunk with anything like that has to be removed immediately. Removing the metal is absolutely necessary because otherwise we can smash the knives in the chippers or damage sections of the plant in subsequent production processes. Let's take a closer look at the blades in the chippers. Round discs with extremely sharp cutting edges. We're only allowed to approach them when they're at a standstill. For good reason. Once in action, these knives reduce even the thickest tree trunks to tiny wood chips, just as if they were melting, here in slow motion. In real time, the blades only take a second to cut up one meter of wood. And this is the result, the wood chips. They travel from the hall, high up on conveyor belts hundreds of meters long, to these two stockpiles. These wood chips are all made of coniferous wood. Wood like this with long fibers is used to make printing or writing paper. However, wood chips from deciduous trees are also important for toilet paper because their short fibers make the paper smooth and soft. However, it takes a lot of effort to get at the fibers in the wood and that's why he has to take over now, the decomposer. For wood to become paper, it has to be broken down into the finest fibers. This can only be done with chemicals. In large containers, chemicals gradually dissolve the wood chips until in the end, only the fibers remain. When pressed together, they look like this. White, like paper, but completely unsuitable for writing or for the toilet, because that's just the pulp, the raw material for paper. This hall here is also all about pulp, namely the pulp in waste paper. At 70%, waste paper is the main raw material for the German paper industry. The Germans are particularly conscientious collectors, so it really pays off, because each sheet can be recycled seven times. This means that most of the paper in Germany actually comes from paper. 
However, this collecting frenzy also means there's a lot of cardboard in the blue collecting bins, and even plastic. A huge mess like that is not good at all for making paper, let alone toilet paper. That's why the first thing to do is sort the mess out. And that's exactly what this machine does, the sorter. On two floors, this giant machine throws rubbish, plastic and cardboard off the belt fully automatically. On floor one, in this container, the rough pre-sorting begins. A sieve filters out large refuse and cardboard here. The rest goes to the second floor and to a special technology. Near-infrared sensors are used here. They detect pieces of cardboard and plastic in a fraction of a second and then trigger a blast of air that shoots the plastic and cardboard off the belt. The plant sorts 400 tonnes of waste paper every day. But high-tech can't do everything. The very last remaining bits of cardboard have to be sorted out by hand, because even the smallest pieces still have enough glue on them to make them stick to the paper machine later. The sorted paper now has to go into the giant washing machine. This machine world looks like something out of the early days of the Industrial Revolution. The paper has to pass through a total of 14 stations here until the fibres can be used again for new paper. It's a lot of work, but it's still more environmentally friendly than producing pulp from wood. Let's take a look inside the three most important stations. First, the drums. Unlike in a washing machine, things are broken down in here. Chemicals break down the waste paper into a thin pulp. The mixture flows through a sieve. Tiny particles of waste get caught up in it and are filtered out. After decomposition comes fine cleaning, a further purification stage in these cleaners. Inside, the fibre mixture rotates very quickly on its own axis. Centrifugal forces push heavy dirt particles such as sand or splinters outwards to the wall where they sink to the bottom. There, they're removed. The last thing to do is remove the printing ink. In the past, people were less fussy, so recycled paper was always grey. Today, the trend has changed. That's why the fibre pulp is washed with soap so that plenty of foam is produced. The colour particles in the inks attach themselves to the air bubbles and rise to the top where the foam is skimmed off. After washing, the result looks like this. But surely, this coarse sludge can't be made into fine paper. It certainly can. The pulp is later bleached and diluted with lots of water. And off it goes to the paper machine. A 120-metre monstrosity. This is the core machine. It produces solid paper from the watery stock in four steps. Spraying, pressing, drying, ironing. Sounds simple, but it's pure high-tech. The paper machine is extremely complex. It has more control circuits than an aeroplane, but as we always say, just can't fly. But the speed is certainly comparable. This white 10-meter web is the wire. It races through the machine at 100 kilometers per hour over countless rollers. The paper is produced on this wire. What kind of paper it is, whether it's newsprint or toilet paper, depends on the mixture of fibres, additives and water. In principle, the production process is always the same. Here's how it works. 160 nozzles spray the mixture onto the wire. The fibres then get stuck on the wire and the water shoots through and flows away. The second station in the huge machine is the presses. Rollers press the wet fibre layer onto a special covering called press felt. It presses the remaining water out of the fibres. But even now, there's still too much moisture in the paper. That's why it has to go into the 65 metre long heater, a roller mill. The roller's temperature is 110 degrees. This treatment has an obvious effect. The thin layers of fibres on the wire become bone dry. And only now do we finally have white paper. It already looks like paper, but it's still a bit creased. The rollers first have to iron it nice and smooth. Then comes the quality control. 
A sensor measures the thickness and density of the web. Finished. It's hard to believe, but in real time the entire process only takes seven seconds. From the very beginning to here. Within just 50 minutes, the paper web winds itself into a gigantic jumbo reel with a weight of 40 tons. Yes, that's a lot of paper. But the truth is, Germans also use a lot. On average, 250 kilos per person per year. This also includes these small but so important rolls. The average German uses one of them in just under eight days. The rolls can be made of waste paper or of fresh pulp, like those here. But the question is now, how does such a jumbo reel become such a small roll of toilet paper? The answer is this, the toilet paper winder. It's not as big as the paper machine, but with a length of 80 meters, it is quite imposing, and it produces 500,000 rolls a day. Especially important is the right winding technique. The large jumbo reels are unwound at the same time and their paper is brought together in the machine so that there are several layers on top of each other. Germans prefer three-ply toilet paper. But not only inner values are important. In the machine room, the paper is embellished. Inking rollers press colourful motifs like little flowers onto the top layer. Almost one in three Germans wants to have colourful toilet paper in their bathrooms. Then it's the turn of the rear side. A roller presses small dots into the paper, micro-embossing. It looks unspectacular, but it is important. Micro-embossing consists of small embossing dots. This puts more volume into the material, into the paper. That creates a nice softness, and for the customer it means that the product is very soft and pleasant to use. So that the paper layers don't fall apart again straight away, this roller applies a special adhesive that makes sure the loose layers stick together. Pressed again, and now also perforated, the toilet paper now gets its centerpiece, the cardboard rolls. They travel directly into the machine from the outside via a frame and a conveyor belt. The paper is then wound around them always exactly 18.75 meters. That's the length of an average roll of toilet paper. The technical term for these elongated rolls is logs, which brings us back full circle to the forest, more or less. The only thing missing is the log saw. The blades cut the rolls of toilet paper to size, slicing through the logs 180 times a minute. And since toilet paper is not recycled, this is where the toilet roll's journey comes to an end.